Good afternoon and welcome to the uh, seventh Papalardo Symposium where we'll hear from some of our Papalardo fellows about the, the work they've been doing. Um, this is of course uh, all made possible by uh, Neil and Jane Papalardo uh, and Neil is, is here today. And uh, so we're going to hear uh, five talks uh, with a little break in between, uh, but tradition dictates that uh, we, we start with a few appropriate remarks and uh, I'll call on Pablo Juro Herrero to uh, talk about his experience as a Papalardo Executive Committee Chair. Thank you very much, Peter. So, um, Peter Sapp, my name is Pablo Jari Herrero and I'm the current chair of the Papalardo Committee. So it's, it's, it's really a pleasure to, to say a few words uh, and, and to welcome you know, Neil and, and his family and friends to, and all of you to, to the symposium. So, you know, the, the Papalardo program has had a tremendous impact in the, in the physics department. You know, all of you, you know, are aware of this and, you know, we've, we've heard many times in previous symposia. I, I, as I was thinking about some of these remarks, I thought that, you know, one, one good way to start would be to, to point out the fact that, you know, so we've had 17 seasons now we have uh, nine current and 54 former Papalardo fellows, so the total size is almost the size of the actual physics department now, uh, faculty-wise, you know. Uh, soon, soon they'll surpass us. And out of this, you know, Papalardo fellows, you know, we have four current MIT physics faculty who were former Papalardo fellows, Jeff, or Marin, Robert, and one physics lecturer, Paula. So definitely this, this program is not just that we're, you know, spread it around the world, great, great talent, but, you know, some of it remains in-house and, and, and we benefit all you know, enormously from it. Now, as I just mentioned, you know, this, the, the fellows have gone all around the world to very prestigious places. This is just a, a small selection of, of some of the, of the fellows and, and where they, they, they are you know, in all fields of physics from, from condensed matter, which is close to me, uh, to you know, astrophysics and, and, and high energy and, and many other uh, disciplines. You know. This, these fellows are doing great. They're going to the best jobs at, at the best places all around the world. And this is something that by now, you know, it's, it's happening for 17 years and, 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 and it's, it's really amazing. As, as, as Peter mentioned, the, the, the most important thing today is to hear the exciting physics that the, some of the current Papalardo fellows are, are exploring. So we have a very nice program that, uh, you know, where, where, you know, Julieta has been and, and you know, and, Itamar and, and Lampos and Michael are going to tell us about their research. You know, we'll, you know, I'll, 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 I won't say much since they are going to be the ones that, that speak about uh, their research. I want to mention that it's not just that you know the Papalardo program is is you know helping the department enormously by bringing tremendous talent. Is that it's improving a lot the collegiality and environment in the department. You know, so this is this is very different from other programs from what my colleagues tell me at their universities. So one thing that, that is great is the fact that we have these weekly lunches where we all sit down, uh, faculty, fellows, and lately also some other postdocs. And, and this really makes you, know, it makes you make friends in the department. You know, this, this is the lunch that I, that, I, that I cherish the most actually in the department. You know, the weekly lunch, the Papalardo lunch is, is the thing that I'm most excited about at, of all the weekly lunches. Now the, the, the Papalardo, <laughs> you know, program is literally improving the, the, the health of the physics department, you know, and you all know that we, we come for our weekly dose of vitamins, you know, and <laughs> the bowl of berries, you know, and if, if there's ever, well, I don't think it has ever miss, been missing, but, you know, if the berries are not there, you know, I don't know what we will do. And, and the whipped cream, of course, helps, you know, with the, with the health too. So, with the mental health, you know. So, then, so, <laughs> about what the program should be is there we should have lunches and dinners on a short-term basis that'll bring people together yep. because the budget for food that the physics department had under Mark Kastner <laughs> was higher than any other department <laughs> at uh, that's because he, he had such a generous dean. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and, and Neil, you have a lot more input than just the food. <laughs> so, as as you know, we you know 
there is, there is a committee that happened to be the chair this year. I've been actually in the committee for many years. This is, this is the Papalardo Committee. You know, we have representation from, from all the groups in the department. This, you know, this is called the Papalardo Committee, but most people know it as the most fun committee. You know, it's, it's the one that it's easiest to get faculty to, to, to join because people really enjoy a lot going over or you know, listening to, to the you know, fantastic finalists that we bring and then you know, selecting the, the fellows and then interacting with them. I wanted to give just a, a brief example of, of how you know, the impact, you know, direct impact that the Papalardo program had in my research. And I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say much about research itself, I'm just gonna say, so there was this gentleman, Liang Fu, he was a Papalardo finalist in the 2008-2009 competition. And we were the committee there and he came and you know, you, during the final, you know, finalist interviews, the, the people arrive and they start using the blackboard and explain things, sometimes very complicated, sometimes, you know. Liang just came like this in the middle of the room and started talking. He didn't use the blackboard at all. He spoke for 10 minutes, and he was so eloquent. He explained this very novel and, and very different, difficult concept in condensed matter physics called topological insulators. But he, he did an amazing job. I thought we were all like listening, mesmerized. So it was so beautiful that it literally prompted me to start a new research direction in topological physics, actually, in my group. And you know, I, I, I don't want to say too much about this. You know, this is quite you know, complicated. I can't do as good a job as Liang, so I won't try. But if you fast forward to the present, okay, we have current Papalardo fellow, some Fembu, who's sitting here in the audience, and he measured recently the first topological insulator in an atomically thin 2D material set in a record high temperature operation. This was actually based on theoretical predictions by Liang Fu and his collaborators at MIT, and that paper appeared in Science a couple of months ago. Here is the behavior. It's a function of temperature. There is this 2E squared over H conductance up to 100 Kelvin. This is 10 times higher temperature than previous materials had, had exhibited this behavior. So, you know, just, just from the, right from the first Papalardo committee I was in, there was a very direct impact in my, in my research, and, and, I, and I really want to thank, uh, you know, Neil, Neil for helping support that. Now, let me go back to this most fun committee. So this, this is the committee for this year, and this year it was extraordinary. We set a new record in the department because we made four offers and all four top candidates accepted. There was not a single decline you know, in this year's offers. We made four offers. It's the first time it has ever happened that all our four spots you know, were accepted by the uh, finalists, which means that by now, clearly, the Papalardo program is becoming, you know, if not the most, among the very, very most prestigious programs in the country and in the world. You know, basically, if you make an offer, there's a very, very high chance that it will be accepted. People really want to come here. So now these, these four fellows, Dennis, Bernhard, Adrian, and Steven, are going to come in in September 2018, and they won't be alone. They will form part of the Papalardo family, you know, which by now, as I said, has already 64 plus members. So then I was thinking about all this, and then I thought, um, how, you know, given how much Neil has helped the department, how could we, you know, pay Papalardo back, you know? And of course, I meant symbolically. You know, it just <laughs> doesn't make any sense to have donors if you actually have to return the money. So, and then I was thinking about this thing, and the thing that kept coming to my head was that Neil is very proud of his Mediterranean origins. In fact, I found an interview where he, and I'm quoting him, he said, I lived with my grandparents growing up in a Sicilian family on a Sicilian street in a Sicilian neighborhood in a very small village outside Rochester, New York. <laughs> so, you know, I, based on this, I made a new formula. It's called the Papalardo formula. Three quarters Sicilian plus one quarter New Yorker is one nil, you know. <laughs> so then I thought, okay, so maybe symbolically we could pay him in some way. And then I was talking to a friend who told me, you know, I was talking about something else to a friend, and he told me, you know what the, what the salary of an engineer was in ancient Rome? And I hope I get this right, Michael, but you know, if, if not, please forgive me. And then it was something called a silver denarius. You know, that was the daily wage of a skilled laborer in ancient Rome. So then I thought, oh, you know, okay, th you know, this is a map of ancient Rome. You know, 
uh, little, you know, origins are, are here. I'm from this weird region here called Hispania, you know. So I, I thought, well, maybe we can get Neil, you know, something, you know, a little bit of an artist to pay him back. But then, of course, you start doing research, and it's like, you know, each Roman emperor had its own denarius. So which one do I choose, you know? So I was a little bit, you know, confused. You know, I was there. So I thought, okay, let me Google your, you know, Google is great, right? So I typed, you know, who are the best Roman emperors, you know? So <laughs> turns out there's this page, the top 10 greatest emperors of ancient Rome, you know? And then I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see who they were. And I'm, you know, I'm browsing through this page, and suddenly I was stunned what I saw, you know? This is edited, you know, it's classified information in some of these places, <laughs> which I'll disclose in a moment, but I want you to focus on this paragraph here that I'm zooming in. He, meaning the emperor, also built temples, theaters, mausoleums, promoted the Roman arts and the sciences, and bestowed honors and financial rewards upon teachers of rhetoric and philosophy. And this style of government was highly praised by his contemporaries and later generations. So I thought like, well, you know, Actually, this sounds very much like, like Neil. So then what I realized is, and I only showed you before a fraction of the interview, you know, that you know, this thing where he said about three times Sicilian. Let me show you the full interview, what it says, you know, because you're wondering why, why he's holding black, right? You're gonna see in a moment. This interview, which was you know, a couple of years ago, was from Modern Healthcare magazine. And there's one question there where they ask Neil, I've seen your name listed as A. Neil Papalardo. What does the A stand for and why did you stop using it? And Neil replies, I've never stopped using it. Then he goes about his Sicilian, 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 and then <laughs> says, I was a second born son, so I'm named after my mother's father. His name is Antonina. So guess what's the name of this emperor, this Roman emperor, patron of the sciences, happens to be Antoninus. Pius. So Antoninus Pius, you know, was very well known as a you know, Roman emperor, patron of the sciences. So Neil, I thought that it would be very much appropriate to provide you with an authentic silver denarius, 2,000 year old, Antoninus Pius. <laughs> This is the certi Certificate of Authenticity. Uh, it is actually 2,000 years old. <laughs> and for those of you that cannot see it uh, now, this is why it the way it looks, okay? It's almost 2,000 years old, silver denarius. It has in the front, Antonino Spears, in the reverse, the fortune goddess, you know, with a rather than cornucopia, rather to steer, you know, to provide leadership and cornucopia, which provides abundance. So with this, I wanna thank you both, Ian and Neil, for the support of the department, and we can you know, get the symposium started.